Oh, bless the name of the Lord. This is the day that the Lord had made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We welcome you to Bethel Tabernacle, the place right here in the village of Weeksville, in the heart of Crown Heights, where we lift up the name of Jesus. And for the next 60 minutes, we are doing nothing else but to bring all the glory, all the honor, all the grace and power belongs unto the Lord. I need somebody to say this morning, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will continually be in my mouth. If you're watching this from wherever you may be watching, from the hospital, from your home, from across the street, from somewhere in your living room, I need you to say, my soul, bless the Lord at all times. You can hear it in my voice, how that I'm excited to be in the land of the living one more day. And I need you to make sure that you call somebody, text somebody, make sure you're sharing this service as we go into the presence of the Lord. Lift up the name of Jesus. Oh, magnify his name. Oh, come on. As we've been saying since March of 2020, hashtag, it's time to worship. I'm the Reverend Dr. Dave Allen, and we bring you before the presence of the Lord in this next 60 minutes as we go into his inner presence, as we start off with our call to worship this morning. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. For the day in your courts is better than a thousand. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. And because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your good. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. And bless the day that dwell in your house. Lord, I have loved the habitation of your house the place where your glory dwells. For the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Together. Oh, oh sing unto, unto the Lord, Lord a new song, song for he has done marvelous things. things. Make a joyful noise unto, unto the Lord. Lord. All, all the, the earth, earth sing, sing praise. praises. Oh Lord, our God, we come this morning giving you the honor, giving you the glory, giving you the praise. For Lord, we welcome your presence. We invite your presence right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, for you are the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Lord, you are our everything this morning. And we come, God, giving you praise, God. And no matter what situation or circumstance we find ourselves in this morning, God, we give our concerns to you, God, because only you can do it, God. Only you can heal. Only you can deliver. Only you can set free right now in the name of Jesus, wherever we are lying in our beds, walking on the street, driving in our cars, God, or just listening, listening to this service, God. Lord, all we ask, God, no matter what is going on in our lives, God, we ask that you meet our needs, God. And Lord, right now, we're believing you to do it in this service, God. When the preacher comes forth, this afternoon, this morning, God, use the, in the name of Jesus that someone will be delivered and set free. And Lord, we just love you, we adore you, and we magnify you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen, and amen. Amen. Come on, if you're excited about today, the Lord has Hallelujah. kept us another week and Hallelujah. we're so grateful. We're so grateful today. Come on, if you're in the sanctuary, if you're online, wherever you are, come on, let's set our hearts and our minds on God. How many know He's able? He's able to do all things but fail. Hallelujah. Exceedingly abundantly above all 
All we can ask for a thing According to the power that worketh in you In you Oh, God's able to do just what he said he will do Feel every promise to you. Don't give up on God, cause He won't give up on you. He is able. Yes, He is. He is able. Yes, He is. Come on, help me say. It. God is able to do just what He said He would do. He's gonna fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God. Don't give up on God. Cause He won't give up on you. He's able.
Anybody know that he's able this morning? Anybody know that he's able this morning? Hallelujah. The song says, come on, Zion. Hallelujah. I need you to put your hands on this one because we're going to move a little bit. Tell your neighbor, I hope you're ready because we're going to jam a little bit to this one. You ready? Clap your hands, oh clap your hands. Everybody clap your feet. Proclaim that he is Lord. Sound the alarm of victory. Oh clap your hands. Everybody clap your feet. Proclaim that he is Lord. Sound the alarm of victory. Oh clap your hands, oh clap your hands. Everybody, everybody clap your feet. Proclaim, proclaim that he is Lord. Sound the alarm of victory. Oh, clap your hands. Everybody, everybody stop it. Proclaim, proclaim that he is Lord. Got me along with this. Let's praise him, let's praise him. With all of your heart and soul, let's praise him. Come on, Zion, come on, Zion. Let's praise him. With all of your heart and soul, let's praise him. From the top, oh, clap your hands. Oh, clap. Everybody, everybody, everybody proclaim, proclaim that he is Lord. Sound the alarm, the alarm of victory. Oh, clap your hands, everybody. Everybody, proclaim, proclaim that he is Lord. Sound the alarm of victory. Oh, clap your hands. Oh, clap. Your I don't see you clapping out there. Proclaim, proclaim that he is Lord. Sound the alarm of victory. Oh, clap your hands. Everybody stop your feet, proclaim that he is Lord, Down the alarm. let's praise him, let's praise him, with all of your heart and soul, let's praise him, come on Zion, come on Zion, let's praise him, with all of your heart and soul, let's praise him, come on Zion, come on, let's praise him, let's Come on, put your hands on it with all of your heart and soul. Let's praise him. Come on, Zion. Let's praise him. Let's praise him. Yeah. Let's praise him. Come on, let's go to the vamp. Yeah. Say, come on, Zion. 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 They don't preach like they used to. Come on, Zion. Come on, Zion. Come on, Zion. Everybody clap your hands. Come on, everybody clap. Everybody clap your hands. Come on, everybody put them on together. I want to try this. Say, hey, 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 
your name. Say, come on, dying. Come on, dying. Come on, dying. Come on, dying. We're going to move to the right. Let's go. Hey. You got to move a little bit. See you moving. That's all right. Hey, everybody, let's move. Woo! Hey, let's go. Hey, I see you moving. Come on, let's do our walk round one more time. Y'all ready? Let's go. Say hey. I said, come, come, come on. I said, come, come, come on. Yeah. 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 Come on, everybody, clap. Let's go. Oh, come on. Don't stop there. Somebody say, come on, Zion. 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 give God praise and thanks for his goodness and his mercy oh come on out there if you're watching this I need you to send up your best emojis in that comment section this morning somebody put in there I will bless the Lord come on Zion as we worship the name of Jesus we're here for no other reason but to magnify the name of the Lord I need somebody out there oh come on I need you to make sure as we go through this service you're listing the names of your loved ones in the comment section I believe in the power of prayer I believe that if we all together as one go before God but God will do the impossible somebody saying the impossible I welcome you to Bethel Tabernacle this morning as we go through this service we got a great service we got a great word somebody put that in the comment section we got a great word but I need you I need you this time to make sure that you support this ministry we got some challenges that we do need your help on and when I say this I don't mean it as if it's just cliche it's just real and so I want you to help us meet the cost of ministry the cost of doing of keeping the church going on this Facebook 
you can go to www.bethelltabernacleame.org slash donate and you'll see the various ways that you can give. And additionally, you can see the many, many ways. You can see Cash App, PayPal, you can see Givelify, you can text the word give, all those options. And now I want you to know, I'm not trying to limit what you can give. We need some people. Honestly, we need some people who can give $1,000. We need some people who can give 500 We need some people who can give 250 And we need some people who can give 100 And if you're one of those people, give as God had blessed you. Father, we thank you for those who are about to give. And for their blessings. Now bless their homes. Bless their families. Cause their face to shine upon them. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, worshipers. Thank you, musicians. Thank you for those behind the scenes. Y'all are doing a wonderful job. Thank you so much. Um, it's been, it's been a, a great month so far, but in many ways, we do have some challenges. But at the same time, we want to make sure that our communities are protected. Our communities have good men and women, not only of a different ethnicity, but also of our own. Amen. And I'm, all, I'm, I'm just delighted this morning to um, call this Lieutenant Julian Stapleton, who is not only a lieutenant in the NYPD. Come on up, beautiful sister. Um, not only a lieutenant in the NYPD. I'm going to say that again. Not only. You will see that she's a black woman. Amen. And so we support our black sisters. Amen. Somebody make a shout right there. Oh, come on. You should be lighting up that comment section right there. Come on, we got to support our women in law enforcement, especially when they are our color. Amen. But she's also, um, she has a, a big role in the noble NYPD chapter of New York. And so she was going to come now and give you these words. She's a little bit nervous, but support her. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Amen. Come on, sister. Um, good morning, uh, Bethel. I, I did not know that you guys partied like that. I was not prepared. Y'all was about to see me get down. I was like, this is my first time. Let me, let me keep it calm the first time. Um, so I'm here today because um, the NYPD, again, as you said, I'm a lieutenant in the New York City Police Department. I've been in the uh, NYPD for 14 years. And right now, NYPD is hiring. Right, so recruitment is open for until April 27th to take, to register to take the exam to be a police officer. Now I'm not, I'm gonna be real, we know what's going on in the world. And uh, it is a critical time. Um, like anything else, it's a calling. And sometimes callings are difficult, most of the time they are, right? <laughs> um, with 14 years on, I still feel nervous when I see the lights behind me and I don't know how a stop is gonna end up, right? But I also know that as a leader in the police department, I can make a difference and I have made a difference. I, as a, a lieutenant specifically, you lead in a precinct, you could leave it up to like 80 people and you set the standards for what that, the, this, what you're about, how you're gonna treat people and you set those examples. When we want, when we're at a time when we're pushing for racial equity, when we're pushing for all of these things, we need to have our voices be heard and appear in those spaces. So I know it's difficult. <laughs> I know it's difficult to think about taking up that challenge, taking up that mantle, taking up that torch, but it is a rewarding, rewarding career. We have an obligation to our communities. We have an obligation to our children and our future. So don't understand where you, where you fit in that. But I understand some people are only in it for what can benefit them. So I'll tell you what the benefits are. I am 23-ish. Not really, let me not lie in the church. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 36 years old and I own a home. I make $150,000 a year. I get five <laughs> weeks. <laughs> I get five weeks of vacation. I have health insurance. Last year, the NYPD sent me on a leave of absence to go get my master's degree, and they paid for the master's degree, and they paid my salary. This job gives you the opportunity to change the trajectory of your own family, even if you don't care about anybody else's. My son, he has a home. He has his own room. He can't, there's nothing that I can't provide for him. I don't have to worry about how he's going to eat at night. This is why we need these jobs. 
we've got to fight this, this fight on many different levels, right? We've got to provide for our families and we've got to take care of everybody else's family too. So I'm calling you guys, I'm going to put it in the chat. Please sign up for the, um, for the police exam, even if that's not your first goal, it's always good to give yourself options and something to fall back on. You could take the job and realize that it's not for you and quit, and all you'll do is walk home with a paycheck for that day. Take this, take this opportunity. Um, also, the New York, Noble New York chapter to, to help facilitate the re recruitment process. We also have test prep because we're going to walk, through, walk you through this whole entire thing. We need people to look who look like us to police the communities that look like us. <laughs> So thank you guys for your time. <laughs> I will be going up. <laughs> thank you. Come on, put your hands out there for her and give her a shout out. Amen. I adore people like Lieutenant Julian Stapleton because when I had my very first church in the Rockaways in the AME church, in the AME denomination that is, um, she was a big supporter of me. And so um, thank you so much. Amen. You can't forget where you came from. Amen. But I, I support her wholeheartedly. Somebody say wholeheartedly. And she knows that. Plus, she's, from, she's Caribbean. So, hey, hey, praise God. Amen. And in the, in the lieu of that, I want to please lift up a prayer for those in St. Vincent's who have experienced the amount of tragedy and the amount of ashes and everything else that's going on but not only in St. Vincent but across to Barbados and across to the Grenadines and wherever those ashes are flying. Amen. It's one thing to look at people in a distance but when it happens to us we want everybody to pray for us. Am I talking to anybody out there? And so please, please, please lift them up in prayer. I want to lift up um, Mother Benzina Rice. Please keep her in prayer. Um, I'll be meeting with her today. So please, please. Thank you, Brother Ken. Brother Ken is a wonderful um, man and usher of this church. He is not afraid to tell me when and who I need to go pray for. Amen. So, Brother Ken, I shout you out because you're a good partner with me in the kingdom. And I'm grateful. I just wish so many more people would do the same. Amen. Because Pastor can't know everything. Amen. And so, um, thank you. I want to shout out Sister Donna because, because of Sister Donna. I had my second dose of vaccine yesterday. Amen. And so, um, let me just say this for the experience of it, for those who need to know. Last night, I was in bodily pain, but part of it was because of my age. And so, um, but um, that second dose, that second dose, I was telling Brother Ronald, Brother Ronald Johnson that... Um, that I think it's the pains I had was just probably because I had refused to take Tylenol at a particular hour. And so I wanted to bear the pain, but at least by 1 a.m. this morning, it was all done. So thank you. I am fully vaccinated. And so hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> fully vaccinated. Now I just need somebody to please speak to my wife so she can get vaccinated too. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know some people tried, but they failed. So I'm calling on the powers that be. Get her vaccinated. Amen. There's a powerful word that's coming tonight that's going to bless you. You've, been, you've listened to the messages in the last few weeks. I'm asking you to please share. Please share. Please go sign up. Young people, young, you heard what Lieutenant Stapleton said. Please see the trajectory of your life. The trajectory of your life. Work on it. Go sign, go sign up, get enrolled in the NYPD. Amen. I want to give a great shout out to Chief Judith Harrison. And, and that's a big supporter of mine also. She said to me, I'm working on a community event that's going to happen on June 12th, second Saturday of June in the park. Help me out, Sarai. Um, help me in the park, St. John's Park from the 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. And it's a con in conjunction with the 77th Precinct, in conjunction with Bethel Tabernacle, and it's in conjunction with this nonprofit I've started, which is called Epic Village Community Development Corporation. It's going to be humongous. So we ask every young people, if you have a young person in your house, come out on that Saturday. It's going to be a ball. We are speaking against gun violence. We are speaking against um, anything in, these, in our communities that's causing us to be... Um, 
to, to just struggle with how the empowerment that we need to have. So please come on out. I'll keep saying it. I'll keep saying it. We'll post it also. And so Ronald, brother Ronald Johnson is the coordinator for Bethel Tabernacle. Amen. And so I myself is working on the external community of this. Worshippers, come on out. Let's get us into the presence of God. And there's a great word. Somebody go in the comment section and say there's a great word. I heard it. Somebody go in the comment section and say there's a great word. I need there's a great word that's going to empower you. There's a great word that's going to encourage you. There's a great word that's going to cause somebody to get a shift in their life. And I know that God is able. Oh, come on. I need you to light up that comment section with those emojis. And say, my God is able. 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 Say, my God. Oh, come on. Light it up. Light it up. I yes, need you Lord. to make sure that you're sharing as they come and lead us into the presence of the Lord this morning. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's nobody like our God. Yes, God. Nobody like the Lord that we serve. Hallelujah. Just worship with us. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord. Our Lord. is your name your name is strength your name is power a strong tower makes me safe oh
nobody like you, Lord. 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 Nobody. Yes, God. Yes, God. to be lifted high. All I want is for you, for you to be glorified, for you to be lifted high. All I want is for you, for you to be glorified, for you to be lifted One more time. All I want For you to be glorified, for you to be lit, and we're crying, no. We're crying, no. Nobody like you, Lord. Oh, come on, lift up your voices out there. Come on, you should be magnifying the name of the Lord. There is nobody, there is no one, there is no God like the God we serve. Oh, come on, you should be lifting up his name right now because he is the same God who is the consuming fire of the Old Testament. But he's the loving God of the New Testament. He's the God who made a way out of no way. He's the God who is Rapha. He's the God who is your healer. He's Jehovah Nissi. He's Jehovah Shalom. He's Jehovah, the God who gives me my peace, which is Jehovah Shalom. He's the God when I'm feeling lonely. He is my Jehovah Shammah. He's omnipotent. He's omnipresent. He's omniscient. He's the God of yesterday, the God of today. I, I, you, you should be lighting up that comment section right now. You should be lighting it up. You should be lighting it up. You should be, you should be lighting it up. Oh, come on, magnify his name. Oh, ain't nobody, ain't nobody, no, ain't nobody like our God. I need you to just say, Lord, I declare my healing for somebody who is going through chemotherapy, for somebody who has dementia right now, for somebody who's Alzheimer's, for somebody who have ulcers in your body, for somebody who's dealing with a loved one 
who is on a hospital bed for somebody who is going through COVID for somebody who is dealing with the challenges of their financial situation. I need you to declare that my God is able. Ain't nobody like my God. Hallelujah. I want to bring a word before you this morning which will be coming from the Gospel of Luke. It's a long chapter, but I'm just going to be reading specific verses for you. And that should be from verse, is it 36B? When it's B, it's like the second line down. Verse 36. And while we're there, while we're there, we'll go all the way over to verse 48 so you can get it in your understanding. It says here, Luke 24. While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, Why are you troubled? Why, watch this word. And why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and, and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see I have. When he said this, he showed them his hands and feet. And while, they were still, and, and while they still did not believe it because of joy and amazement, he said to them, Do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. He said to them, This is what I told you. While I was still with you, everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, this is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. Watch this. You are witness of these things. I'm going to read verse 49. I'm going to send you what my father has promised. Watch this. But stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. I want to use for a sermon topic this morning. I believe God. He is my peace. Can I say that again? I, I believe God. He is my peace. Somebody out there need to catch this. I believe God. He is my peace. Uh, family, it's, it's been a rough week in America. A rough week. A rough past four months. A rough week in our justice system. Uh, a rough week for families who are dealing with news of a loved one. Not just a loved one, but a, a black son. Someone who is killed again. Uh, sources have shown that there is a significant rise in mass shootings, but at the same time, while it is paradoxical that black families are faced with dealing with the pandemic, loss of resources, in comparison to other communities, uh, they have to face a different pandemic. The pandemic because of the color of their skin. Uh, who would have thought that a black lieutenant, black army lieutenant will be pulled over, pepper sprayed, and treated with disgust? Uh, when he got out the car, he started using these words, Lieutenant Stapleton. He says, this is bloop bloop up. I, I wanted to repeat it 10 times with him. This is bloop bloop expletives messed up. I could feel the emotions of why he was saying that. But then I started thinking, who would have thought that in the midst of the George Floyd case where the defense is nefariously hoping to cast doubts, somebody said doubts, on the prosecution case, that it wasn't the need that caused George Floyd's death, but the drugs in his system. <laughs> who would have thought that a, that a white army drill sergeant was determined to beat the life out of a black man, young man, who was walking in a predominantly white neighborhood, but could not see that the young man had mental issues. 
And I give you one more. Who would have thought, forever thought, that a veteran police officer, watch this, could not identify the difference of what she was holding in her hand between a gun and a taser and took the life of Dante Wright. I don't know about you, but it leaves me and my spirit in such a restless place of doubt and disbelieving, of asking the question, are we, why are we still here? And these incidents are not a great indicator that we have come far, saints. No, that we have made progress. No, that we have not, that we are still not judged by the color of our skin. No, these incidents make me want to keep asking God like the psalmist questions of, about God, questions to God. Lord, how long will you look on and do nothing? Lord, how much more do we need to suffer? Lord, how long will those who hate us rule over us? Have you ever been there? Have you ever been there when you keep asking the question, why? Because your situation does not seem to be changing. And this is why we see when we come to this text today, that's what we see in this uh, perplexing text, Laquisha. We see that these disciples had the same questions. Uh, if you read the first part of Luke 24, it says the disciples, two disciples was walking on the road to Emmaus. Uh, and they started having questions and saying, listen here, this is not how this should be going. This, this Messiah was supposed to come. Can I break it down for you in a quick moment? This Messiah was supposed to come and be the deliverer. This the Messiah was supposed to come, Shelton, and be the difference. This Messiah is supposed to come and change our lives. But how in the world that the Romans kill him? How in the world that we can understand him? What's going on? Have you ever thought that you're going in one situation, but God has a different plan, and the plan is not clear for your life, but you're still asking the questions? Is there anybody out there, but you're still asking the questions of what in the world is happening but I need somebody to say that I believe God because God is my peace. And here's the first one I want to give you. Um, resistance is often the abs absence of peace. What do you mean by that? I want to look at the text this morning. It says here, as Jesus first came into the room, <laughs> when he came into the room, uh, and he said the first words that came out of his mouth was, peace uh, be unto you. Uh, he didn't come in the room asking them, how are you doing? He came into the room saying, peace uh, be unto you, because he realized that with the, all the questions that they had in their minds, uh, he realized that in the situations and the circumstances of your life, uh, but you're gonna be, you become so restless uh, and you begin to have the questions uh, and the questions don't have answers. Have you ever been there? But you have more questions than answers, but you just need the peace of God that passes what? All understanding. Uh, you need the peace of God that's gonna make a restless situation calm. You're gonna need a peace of God that's gonna keep the waters of your life calm. And that's why when we don't have peace, Peace is often a resistance. We resist because of the people who is around. All of these disciples were arguing. What, what, what? This does not make sense. It says in the first part of the text that the ladies, the ladies, the women went to the tomb and they came back saying the Messiah is risen and they don't believe it. Why is it that we don't really believe our women at times? I ain't y'all ain't talking back to me. Here's the thing. We, we, resistance is often the absence of peace. Jesus came in the room. He says, my peace is unto you. You've got to realize when you walk into certain rooms, <laughs> Lieutenant Sefferton, that you just got to walk in with the peace of God. <laughs> you know all those people are restless, <laughs> but you walk in in the confidence of God. <laughs> you walk in knowing they're talking about you, <laughs> but you walk in with the presence of God <laughs> and the peace of God. You walk in knowing that the situation doesn't look good, <laughs> but you walk in with the, am I talking to anybody out there, but you walk in with the peace of God. You kill the resistance. Somebody say kill the resistance. Watch this. Watch this. The next thing Jesus says. Jesus says um, you're not seeing a ghost. You, you're seeing me, Tony. You, you, and here's the thing. And here's the thing. Here's what Jesus did next. I, I need everybody to get. Here's what Jesus did next. Uh, Jesus says, um, um, do you have anything to eat? Because if, 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 I'm, if I have doubts about the situation and I don't commune with you, sit with you to and change your perspective, then you're going to still think that it's not real. But I, when we, watch this, here's the next point, put it up for me. When we commune, we see the plan of God. 
I say when we come when we talk to each other we can realize that God hand is in the midst of this uh, when we commune when we sit at the table and say let's talk about this uh, you, this is the year that no I need somebody to go in the comment section and say this is the year when I would not be bothered with the negative people around me uh, this is the year when when you act up I'm just gonna say I need to move on uh, this is the year when I sit at the table and when my friends and these Negroes start acting funny uh, I say you don't look like the plan of God to me uh, but you say I've been trying to talk to you I've been trying to do right by you uh, I've been trying to take the doubt that's why when you have a certain position in the community you gotta speak truth to power uh, you gotta say thus sake the Lord uh, you gotta speak truth to your children uh, you say you gotta get up and commune with them uh, and say there are some things I said in this house uh, that you may not like uh, but the plan of God says this uh, I believe God uh, and when I lay down my head at night uh, my, I believe that the peace of God uh, is going to keep me am I talking to anybody out there but when you lay down at night uh, you don't have to be worrying about those who hate you uh, because you sleep well uh, you, uh, you need to stop worrying about what your haters think about you and what those people are talking about you because when you put your head on your pillow uh, you need to sleep soundly you don't need to take any type of melanin melatonin to fall asleep uh, you don't need to take zequil you don't need to take anything you lay your head down on that pillow uh, and says i lay down uh, i ain't moved by your foolish actions because the peace of god keeps me now watch this i gotta get out of here watch this um watch this um, I want you to understand that God helps us to understand the troubles and the errors that we're facing in our lives by opening his word. And the most times, um, the reason why we don't understand where we are in life is because we don't have a clear idea of the intentions, somebody say intentions, of what God intends for our life. Some of us are so always talking so negatively about the events of our life, but you miss the hand of God. I, I had to slow that one. I said some of us are always talking so negatively about the circumstances and the experience and what we're going through and what's not right that we miss the plan of God. Don't you know that if everything is going wrong, I need somebody to get close up to me right now, that if everything is going wrong, it's an opportunity for God to show who he is. But you want everything to go right all the time and if everything is going right all the time you don't know what God is able to do am I talking to anybody out here I spoke to some students this week last week and I said to them they were saying to me you know there's times when I do so bad in my classroom and I said don't worry about it that means you're gonna have a better semester next term this is just an opportunity that you move from the C grade up to the A grade and even if you see times that you will have an A grade and you'll end up with a B plus but it doesn't matter as long as you get the lessons of what God is intending for you. I need somebody to go in the comment section right now and say, Lord my God, I don't want to repeat this class. I'm about to excel on a different kind of level. And when you excel on a different kind of level, you walk into the place of saying, I got peace because through every situation I believe God I need somebody out there but when it don't seem like everything is going right but you can say like the song is you can say like the song person father I stretch my hand today is there anybody out there that right now can go in the comment section and say father I stretch my hand today I'm not worried what it don't what it looks like because I know if you come into the situation as soon as Jesus enters the room my peace is about to come upon me as soon as Jesus enters he's going to sit at the table and when Jesus sits at the table with me I hope you read the text because he says when he sat at the table that all of a sudden he started telling them about the scriptures came and he gave them the scriptures from Moses and he went to the 
prophets and the word of God tells me that he opened the scriptures of their understanding is there somebody out there that says can look in right now at somebody across the way and says if I don't get it right now God is going to make it clear to me is there somebody I don't understand why there's killings of the people of color I don't understand why we have to have another George Floyd case I don't understand why some cops is evil but that does not mean all of them are evil I got some good Julian Stapleton I got some good friends who are NYPD I got some good friends in Chicago who's my friends I got some good friends who are cops in the Caribbean I got some good friends in London who is Scottish Scotland Yard and let me tell you the truth they're all good cops but every now and then you gotta remember what the Jackson 5 said that sometimes there's a good there's a bad apple in the midst of the good ones and is there somebody out there that can says I know what it looks like my brothers are dying I don't need another Sandra Bland I don't need another sister to suffer at the hand of a bullet but I need somebody to say but as for me and my house we're gonna believe God because God is my peace I gotta get out of here wait for it when I look at this text ah, when I look at this text I, all of a sudden a word came to me sister Vicky over a few weeks ago as the word is for this last point understand when to pivot p-i-v-o-t you gotta understand when to pivot I was I started getting perplexed so I went to the scholar of the house I said sister Vicky I need you to act like a preacher right now I said please explain to me what pivot means and Vicky says to me pivot pivoting is like when you're going full steam ahead and suddenly you need to make a change in a different direction uh, okay I, some of y'all didn't get this I said first lady says pivoting is when you're going full steam ahead and then you suddenly need to make a change in a different direction can I say one more time pivoting is when you're going full steam ahead but suddenly you need to make a change in a different direction when I look around this country I see so many negative things that I want to dwell on but I don't have time to dwell on the negative things when there's so much more positive things. And the thing with pivot, it has such a negative connotations, but most people um, put it as if it's painful. People don't like when we pivot because it sounds painful. So pivoting is usually a change. Um, but I need to say to somebody this morning that we all have to come to a place of pivoting, especially when it is revealed to us, don't miss it, that it's time for change. Here's the disciples in this room, and they're thinking that their whole world is coming to an end. And Jesus shows up in the room and says, It's time for the next level of your life. I need somebody to go in the comment section and say, My next level, that the time is coming for change is right now. My pivoting is coming right now. And watch this most people don't pivot on their own because pivoting comes out of necessity. Watch this. I'm preaching Vicky's sermon right now. Um, watch this. In 2020, um, Brother Robert, all of a sudden we realized in March 16 that we had to close the doors of the church. And, and then if you, didn't, if you didn't have cable in your church, internet in your church, you couldn't be on Facebook. Uh, you, 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 auto, you, you automatically had to pivot. <laughs> and you started getting cameras and you learned how to work with the cameras. And then you start learning that I have to make some change in this situation. <laughs> but I can't, I got to get out of here. But there's some people, uh, um, watch this. Uh, if you don't pivot at the right time, it could be disastrous. <laughs> 
and I say if you don't pivot at the right time, it could be disastrous. Can I share a quick? I was telling Vicky, well, watch this. Uh, uh, when back in 2006, I was driving in Long Island, and at that time we didn't have Siri on the phone. And there's some places in Long Island, in deep Long Island, there ain't no lights whatsoever. Even the stars of heaven is not bright enough for you to see. And I'm driving my car through the, these dark streets of Long Island. I don't know where I'm going, but I put as a young man, I'm putting my foot on the gas. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere. Sister Kim, my car stopped. I moved my car around 45 degree angle because I was getting frustrated. So I, I started drag racing my car. And luckily, all of a sudden, God stepped into the car. My car turned off. And when the car turned off, I put up the high beam of the car. And right in front of me, if I had gone one more inch, I would have died right there in Long Island in the dark. You ever saw those high um, cement um, dividers on the highway? That was one of them right in front of me. I cried so much, but the message came to me this last week. And the message is we've got to learn how to pivot. Can I give you some people who didn't pivot at the right time? Y'all remember Lot's wife. The Lord says, get out of Sodom and Gomorrah. I don't want you to look back at it. But she decided, Shelton, she wanted to look back. And she looked back and she turned into a pillar of salt. I came to let somebody know that salt in the wrong place is no good. Can I say it again? I said salt in the wrong place is no good. But I came to let somebody know as I take my high horse out of here. I believe God because God is my peace. I believe God when it don't look good. I believe God when it looks good. I believe God because the peace that I have, the world didn't give it to me and the world can't take it away. I believe God today may not look so good for me, but I'm not trying to pull God down into my situation. I said, Lord, if you step into this, the peace that you give me is going to work out. I need somebody to go in the comment section and say it's going to work out. I got peace. I got peace when they fight me. I got peace on my hospital bed. I got peace when they give me the goodbye. I got peace when they say they're going to move me. I got peace to know but if everything don't go the way I want it. But the peace is going to believe me because I believe God. I believe God in my going in. And I believe God in my coming out. I believe God when the money is short. I believe God when the money looks good. I believe God when my wife acts wrong. But I believe God when she's acting right. I believe God when I got to get up. And it don't look good. But I'm going to push. I'm going to push. I'm going to push. Because. right time and believe God he is 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 my peace somebody shout he is I'm done but I want you to watch that verse 50 around there watch this watch this verse 49 says I'm going to send you to my father to you what my father has promised but stay in the city until until you have been clothed with power 
from on high. Can I say something here? And I'm done. Most of us want to move too fast. And you become restless when Jesus said, just wait for the power. Because when you wait for the power, then you can move forward in every situation of your life with the peace of God. This is for somebody out there. You don't have peace because you didn't wait on God. You don't have peace. You rush into the relationship because you're watching everybody on Instagram. You don't have peace. You don't have peace because you want to be like them. When God said, I got something better for you. And you don't see it yet. But Jesus says, if I give you peace when they're restless, guess who they're going to come to you? You. Can I say this and I'm really done? Um, when you stop asking, they start requesting. When you stop asking, when you stop asking for all the people to be in your life and you want to be around every company and you want to put on all these things to make them like you, when you stop and realize you have peace, God is with you. Come on, somebody out there, pray this prayer. Somebody who's not saved and you just know that you have this restlessness in your life. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Save me. Wash me in the precious blood of the Lamb. Father, I stretch my hand to thee. No other help I know but thee. Let my name be written in the Lamb's book of life. Fill me with the Spirit of God. But I have peace with me. And you're the peace. In Jesus' name. Thank you for joining us. Would you join us next week? Would you let somebody know? Would you consistently share this message until someone is empowered, someone is enriched, someone is saved? I'm the Reverend Dr. Dave Allen, and God is with you. As we sing our closing doxology, praise God from whom our blessings flow. God from Sing and conceal it and solidify it by singing. Ah.